In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to all my and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my thought, through my heart, through my most grievous thought. Therefore, I ask the blessed name and the virtue, all the angels, senses and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who for the glory of your name and the salvation of souls bestowed on the priest Saint Lawrence of Brindisi a spirit of counsel and fortitude, grant we pray that in the same spirit we may know what must be done and through his intercession bring it to completion through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community, having set up from Elim, came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month after their departure from the land of Egypt. Here in the desert, the whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we have died in the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread? But you have to lead us into this desert to make the whole camp community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, however, when they prepare what they bring in, let it be twice as much as they gathered on the other days. Then Moses said to Aaron, Tell the whole Israelite community, Present yourself before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. When Aaron announced this to the whole Israelite community, they turned towards the desert, and lo, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening quail came down and covered the camp. In the morning a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. 
on seeing it, the Israelites ask one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread which the Lord had given you to eat. Verbum Domine. Yes. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The bread of the mighty was eaten by man, even a surfeit of provision he sent them. He stirred up the east wind in the heavens and by his power brought on the south wind. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On leaving the house, Jesus sat down by the lake shore. Such great crowds gathered around him that he went and took a seat in a boat while the crowd stood along the shore. He addressed them at length in parables, speaking in this fashion. One day, a farmer went out sowing. Part of what he sowed landed on a footpath where birds came and ate it up. Part of it fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprouted at once since the soil had no depth. But when the sun rose and scorched it, it began to wither for lack of roots. Again, part of the seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked it. Part of it finally landed on good soil and yielded grain a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Let everyone heed what he hears. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us all be seated. Today is Wednesday on the 16th week of the year and the commemoration of St. Lawrence of Brindisi, priest and doctor of the church. The liturgy of the Mass had been describing to us what is a good teacher and what is a bad teacher. And today's gospel teaches us what is a good pupil and what is a bad pupil. So we have to learn these things so we can find out whether we belong to those who are good and not to those who are bad. Two weeks ago, the liturgy of the Mass described to us what is a good teacher, a good apostle, a good spiritual leader. And the Gospel says he's the one who will teach you that the kingdom of God is at hand. He will not teach you anything else except that then the kingdom of God is at hand. Meaning to say, you are reminded that you can die anytime, 
But at the same time, you can enter the kingdom of God through faith and charity. So when you die, you would go straight to heaven. And then the liturgy last Sunday describes what is a bad shepherd, what is a bad bishop, bad apostle, a bad prophet, a bad teacher. And if you will notice, this was described last Sunday and not one of the bishops or the priests explained the message properly. Not one of them. They preach about many other things, but they did not preach the liturgy of the Mass, especially the first reading. And the reason for this is because it shows that one day, God is going to give us a test, like the first reading for today. God always will give us tests so we can find out if we have faith or not. So we can pass our tests and perfect our faith. So everything we do in life, God will transform it into a test. And so the first reading tells us about God testing the Israelites in the desert, whether they would obey Him or not. That is always the test whether you will obey or not. Now, two weeks ago, the liturgy told us that priests and bishops and apostles are given the command that they should preach only one thing, that the kingdom of God is at hand and therefore we must enter it as soon as possible by making a perfect act of faith. And then we mentioned that since Sunday where that was the first reading, no bishop, no priest explain the liturgy of the Mass. How come? Because precisely the liturgy of the Mass says that one day <clears throat> all of us are going to be tested and our test will consist in that no priest no bishop, no cardinal, not even the present Pope will teach us how to enter the kingdom of God. No one. They will be teaching many other things, very nice topics even, very deep topics, but they will not be talking about the kingdom of God is at hand. And true enough, since last Sunday up to now, no one had been teaching that, which shows that that test is now going on for each one of us. We are undergoing the most difficult test of faith which God himself, God himself, is sending us that we are supposed to save our souls in a time where 
no one will be teaching how to save our soul. Now that is a very difficult task. How can we save our souls if no one will teach us how to save our souls? Well, the first reading last Sunday continues to tell us that yeah, one day God is going to test all of us, all the priests and the bishops and the cardinals and even the Pope will not be teaching us how to enter the kingdom of heaven. And then Christ continues and says, but if you are interested really and serious in saving your souls, I will send you shepherds whom I will personally choose in order to teach you so you will be safe and secure in entering the kingdom of God. And so today, we celebrate the feast of St. Lauren of Brindisi. He was not a shepherd. He was not a bishop. He was not a cardinal. He was not a pope. He was just an ordinary priest. And during his time, he preached and wrote so beautifully and brilliantly on how one can save one's soul so that he is considered today as a doctor of the church. And so the last two weeks are showing us who is the good shepherd. He only teaches the kingdom of God is at hand and will teach you how to enter that kingdom by a life of obedience to the commandments of Christ. What is more important is not whether our shepherds are good or bad. Of course, we should know if our shepherds are good or bad, we should not follow the bad ones, only the good ones. But as the first reading last Sunday says, there will be no good ones at this time of your last test. No good one. So what is important is whether we are good pupils or bad pupils. So last Sunday Christ says, I will, you know, I will test you there will be no good preachers, no good shepherds. There is absolutely no way you can learn how to save your soul. But I will send you for those who truly want to go to heaven. I will send you personally chosen preacher. But even if I send you good preachers, specially sent by God, what if you are a bad pupil? What if you are a bad disciple? So the gospel for today describes to us four kinds of people who listen to the Word of God. Like all of you now, you're listening to the gospel, and the gospel is describing these four kinds of pupils. 
The first kind of pupil is those who receive the word of God, the gospel, in hard ground, footpath. These are hard ground, like when you walk around saying the rosary, the ground where you pass is very hard because you keep on stepping on it. The grass does not grow. It's pure soil by this time. Hard soil. Now, if a seed falls on this, the seed cannot grow root and therefore the devil, the birds can easily pick up the seed and eat it. So when is your soul a hard soil? When you keep always in your minds thoughts of sin, sinful thoughts always occupy your minds. When sinful thoughts are always in your mind, the Word of God, even if you hear it many times during meals, in the reading, it will not grow any root. It won't. And so the devil can easily take away that seed from your soul. That's the first kind of a bad pupil. Always thinking of sinful sins. The second bad pupil is the one who is like rocky ground. Now these are pupils who always do what they want. Even if they do good things, they do it because it's what they want. And so whatever they do, they only do not because it is God's will, but it is because it is what they want. St. Augustine says, if you pray because you want, that is not pleasing to God. Not pleasing. You must pray because it is God's will. When you sleep, when you eat, when you go to recreation, don't do it because it's what you want. Because if you do it because it's what you want, you are rocky ground, a bad pupil. And the seed will not grow in your soul. The moment you have a little sun, the seed dries and dies. It's wilted. There is no water. It dries up. The third kind of bad pupil are those involved in worldly activities. They go to school in the world. They work in the world. And they do other things which are, as St. Augustine says, worldly business. These are the soil souls with thorns. The Word of God never grows in such soul. It chokes the Word of God. It never grows. They never learn and they never are able to obey. And then the fourth soil is the good soil. And so when you are a good soil, 
when God's special apostle, if God sends you a chosen preacher, then the word of God will surely grow very fertile in your soul, thus producing a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. And how do you describe this soul? St. Thomas of Aquinas says, they are meek and humble souls who are obedient to the commandments of Christ. No one can really be obedient to Christ's command unless you are meek and humble. Who are the proud ones? Those who are always angry when they do not get what they want. When they do not get what they want, they are no longer meek. Who are those who are disobedient? Those who are proud. Because the proud always thinks they know better than other people. So who is the fertile soil? Those who are meek, humble, and obedient. And who is the good preacher? The one who teaches you that the kingdom of God is at hand. You could die anytime. Therefore, learn how to enter the kingdom of God by a life of perfect repentance and perfect faith. And this precisely is what St. Lawrence of Brindisi, just an ordinary priest, who thought so much and so wisely and so clearly that just an ordinary priest, he had been declared a doctor of the church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed and adoring and wonderful creation, to the good of him, this is a bread to offer. Which Lord has given human hands that made will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God By the midst of this water and wine, becomes share in the faith of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord, and God of all creation, to your good and we have this wine to offer. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. We thank for the spirit and contrite heart and we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, brethren, that the sacrifice in your earth may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. 
moving in the world, step, step by step in the world, for the pain of sin, blood, and suffering, for our good and the good of all His holy children. Father in heaven, by this celebration, may your spirit fill us with the same light of faith that shines in the teaching of St. Lawrence of Brindisi. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we dwell always and everywhere to give you thanks. You give the church this feast in honor of Saint Lawrence of Brindisi. You inspire us by his holy life, instruct us by his preaching, and give us your protection in answer to his prayers. We join the angels and the saints as they sing their unending hymn of praise, saying, Oh, oh. Holy Lord, God of Jesus, heaven and earth, and the truth of your glory, was found in the heavens. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, was found in the heavens. You are in your holy, O Lord, of found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the Jew falls, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time. He was betrayed and under willingly to his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was sent, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, we proclaim the death of the Lord. Lord. And to your resurrection until you come. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly, we pray. That partaking the body and blood of Christ may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread to all the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with our Pope and our Bishop and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. You may marry to be Go heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Mm. O Ram, is the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Deliver our Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, <clears throat> the power, and the glory of our now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostle, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May this making of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those who receive it. Lamb of God, we take the grace of the Lord, have mercy. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the Lord, have mercy. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the Lord, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, may the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit to you and then gave life to the world, for you may this your most solid body and blood. From all my sins and from every evil, keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called at the supper of the Lamb. No, I am not that you should enter on the Lord. But I will say that you will still show us. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, you renew us with the food of heaven. May Saint Lawrence of Brindisi remain our teacher and example and keep us thankful for all we have received. This we ask through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
go for the masses and the Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel. Saint Michael the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the malice and snares of the devil. May God, we decree, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.